going into the service. And I'd like to have our grand poopa of uh, <laughs> Dr. Soldier Sue. Worked out of my own mouth. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to thank everybody for coming and uh, apologize really quick because I'm not going to be able to stay very long. My husband and I have a wake of a very dear friend we have to sneak out for. So Brandon, uh, no offense to you, but I, I, I got to do that. Um, so briefly, um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Adopt a Soldier, um, why it was started and such. Um, Adopt a Soldier started about a year and a half ago here at the Piatone American Legion. Um, I'm a military mom, and when my kids first went into the military, I found myself very isolated and very alone. Uh, when you live on a base, other military wives and mothers and people that you know that they have experienced what you are experiencing. When you're a civilian and your kids are gone, you don't know. You have no one to share with. And when your friends are all crying and dying because their children went off to college, which is understandable, you just bite your tongue because you think and know that there's a possibility your child's going off to war. So it's a hard time and a very isolated time. And my husband is here tonight and he hasn't been able to be here before, but he can tell you when my son left, <laughs> when my son left for boot camp, mind you, you would have thought somebody killed me. I cried and died, I couldn't stop crying, and had really nobody that understood. When I started to work here at the Piatone Legion, oh, I guess four years ago, um, I found myself at home for a very, the first time in 30 years of being in this industry among my vets here. Um, and I found that there was a trail that I could start with the help of these great veterans. That trail was to start a doctor soldier. And with their support, I was able to do that. Adopt a Soldier is not only about the soldier, it's about the family, as I just explained. Being there for the moms, the dads, that sometimes you don't want to watch the news. Sometimes you won't want to listen to the radio. Sometimes when your child doesn't call you for months on end, you've got someone to call and be able to say, hey, what do I do? How do I handle these feelings? So that was one of my main concerns when I started Adopt a Soldier. The second thing, I guess, is probably the most important. Uh, my son, Marine Corps veteran, uh, did two tours in Iraq. And when he came home, he was not the same young man I sent. Come to find out, he suffered from PTSD. As a mother, it was the first time that I didn't know how to help my child. Um, he was very distant. I, I just didn't know what to do. Being here amongst my vets, talking to some of my guys, they said, we know what he's going through, Sue. And I thought, geez, if I could just get him in here. So I said to him one day, I said, Tony, just come down to the post. Just come and see the guys. He did. Not a word, a word was spoken about war or boot camp or anything like that. But for the first time in probably six years, I saw my son's body language go to a relaxed position. He was at home. He was with his brother's now. And that's when I knew what I had to do. Adopt a Soldier is trying to link, and I'll take the words of my very dear friend, Alan Blog, past generations of heroes with our current and future generation of heroes. And putting those two together so that maybe some of the military soldiers that are now coming home with war wounds and PTSD and TBI and all these things know that there's some place to go where they have a brother or a sister in the military that can help them through those hard times. And for the parents and the siblings and the wives and the girlfriends, that they have a place to go that they know that they can share in the emotions they're feeling and have the support. So that's how Adopt a Soldier was born. And with the help, like I said, it could have never been done without my vets. It could have never been done without Pat. And the many volunteers that you'll see here tonight in the Dr. Soldier shirts or just red, white, and blue or just here. A lot of military moms and dads which will reach out to Brandon's mother and his father and a grandma and let them know that we're here no matter, there's no problem or no fear too small. 
that we're here for you and we will be here for you, Brandon, when you come home, whether it be on leave. We'll be the ones that are going to send you fun things in the mail, things that you might want to show, you might not. <laughs> okay? But, uh, so that's just a little bit of about Adopt a Soldier. I'm going to have Pat come up, which is also Brandon's aunt. Yay. And Pat's going to take over from here, and she knows how to do it. She knows all about it, and know that even in the sad situation I'm going to, I'll be thinking of you, Brandon, and I'll be thinking of your family. I know where Dad went. I know Mom. Dad's somewhere. Dad. We'll be thinking of all of you, and we will be in touch. And without further ado, I'll talk to you later. I don't know if I have a bigger mouth, mouth as she does, but I will try. Oh, if yeah. not, just oh, let yeah. me know. <laughs> you do, okay. Thanks. That's my kid. Uh, I, it's hard to believe that it's been a year and a half that we got to start this, and this is actually the first one that I'm actually going to really interact with, so please bear with me, because it is somebody very special to my heart. This is my nephew, Brandon. Brandon, if you could come up, please. of you and I'm very proud of the fact that uh, you guys drove all the way over here for this and I, I welcome you to our little family as well as me as your aunt. Now I'd like to introduce you to Pitch. Pitch, if you could come up.
going to be a fantastic uh, spot for mom and dad to come if you have questions, problems, concerns. You got a family here. Um, the bar is not open all the time. We have a phone up contact people, and you know how to get a hold of people. My mom was a single mom. When I said, hey, I'm going to the military, she goes, you're a kid, right? I go, no. And I did, I was fine. But at the same time, I'm sure I took some some, some breath out of her, and I'm sure I, I aged her. What did she give it to me when I told her I was 18 years old? I did fine, and you will do fine, sir. I thank you very much. I do have a lot of 
respect for these kids that volunteer to go to service. Because they're all volunteers. When I got my draft notice in 1968, I knew where I was going. And then when my mother said, thank God. It's going to be an all night affair. <laughs> I'm trying to change this up and she's screwing the whole thing up. No, you. Hey, school's going to do well for you. Take your stuff apart and put it back together. You'll be good. I ain't no idea. Uh oh. <laughs> I don't want to go there. <laughs> well, she's wiggling so bad. Hold still. You need your glasses? <laughs> All right, now. Hey. Hold on, hold on. I did it. Come on. Now, you look at her. You look at him. No, I don't want to do this teacher. Is when he gets back, you're going to present that back to him. But you're going to wear it for him every day. And when he gets home, you give it back. Or buy another one and you want that one. Now, the other thing is, okay, I <laughs> joining a band of brothers, right, that you would want you to just a little bit early. The handshake is sorry we need to come in World War II. Yeah. Oh, well, I want to congratulate you. When I talk about band of brothers, every veteran to this sitting in this audience tonight.